Hey everyone, it's Jill Celeste from the Celestial Marketing Academy, where I teach entrepreneurs all they need to know about marketing so they can become the director of marketing for their business. Today's video strategy is geared for those of you who are coaches and consultants and take on private one-on-one -on -one clients. I wanna to talk to you about what you need in your business as far as paperwork and software to help you run an effective coaching practice. So I wanna share with you eight things, if you will, that will help you make your coaching practice run more efficiently, allow you to really interact well with your clients, and make sure you stay sane during this process. So the first thing you need are packages and pricing. Before you even try to recruit somebody into your coaching practice, you need to make sure you know how much you're gonna charge that person. So I recommend creating three packages, two packages and then that third one being a maintenance package so that you have something to sell once the time with you is done. Now it's up to you in your business, maybe you do three month packages, maybe you do six month packages, whatever that looks like for you, but make sure you go ahead and discern what that's going to be and put it on a Word document that you can share with your prospective clients during the right time. You wanna make sure you have all of that squared away from the beginning so that you have it in your sales toolbox. So that's the first thing. Number two, I highly recommend you have some type of online scheduler. So what this is, is it allows people to click a link from your website into some type of calendar feature and they can book your calls, your schedule, uh, your coaching calls, or your maybe your sales calls right there without that crazy back and forth email. Now I use Visita, V-C-I-T-A, but there are so many others out there, Time Trade, gosh, I can't even think of them all, but if you just look up on Google, online uh, calendar, online scheduler, check out what your peers are using and make sure that you use it. And I will say, this is a tool that you probably don't wanna go the free route, because if you pay for an online schedule, you're gonna get some more bells and whistles that'll really help. For example, Visita sends reminder emails to my clients to let them know, hey, tomorrow you have a phone call, you have a phone call an hour, that way I don't have to do it. So check out and make sure you use the best tool, but I do recommend an online scheduler for your coaching practice. The third thing you need is a way to invoice and accept payments from people. Now, when I first started my coaching practice, I accepted payments exclusively through PayPal, and it worked great. I have no complaints about PayPal. Now, because I wanna do um, monthly payment plans and have things sort of auto debit, if you will, or auto charge people's credit cards, I have moved up to a credit card processor. I use authorize.net. But again, there's tons out there. You can even go to your local bank or credit union. They in inevitably will have a tool there for you. But you want to make sure you have that in place so that you can accept payments. Most people will pay by credit card or debit card. So you want to make sure you have a processing system in place. And if you are doing monthly payments, so that, for example, every month they're paying you, you want to try to have that set up so that it automatically does that so you don't have to try to invoice manually every month. So that's the third thing you should have. The fourth thing is a process. You need to have a process for get acquainted calls or introductory calls. So here's what my process is. If someone's interested in talking to me on the phone about my coaching programs, they go and they click on the link to get to my online scheduler and they it's already pre-filled in. They would just select the date and time and uh, go ahead and make that uh, reservation with me. On the confirmation screen, there's a link to a survey. And the uh, prospective client will click on that link and there's about four to five questions I ask them. Things like what are the, what is what kind of business are they in? Uh, how, how have they been marketing their business? What are their struggles? What do they hope to achieve in within one year? Those types of things. And it gives me some background information before I even step foot in the call so that I really know if I can assist this person. And I've gotten to the point now, if you don't fill out your pre-call survey, I will actually, actually um, reschedule your call because I need that information so desperately. So set up a survey, you can do it through SurveyMonkey. I use Infusionsoft because that's what I have for my CRM. There's a survey function on that, whatever works best for you. But create a four to five question survey and have people fill that out before your call so you have time to evaluate it. And another piece of this process is to make sure you have some type of sales script, something written out in advance that helps you keep the flow of the call, making sure you're asking the right questions, making sure you're setting it up so that people will easily buy your program if it feels like a right fit. 
I actually, in the beginning of this process, I'd have it on a piece of paper right next to me while I was on the phone and I would just follow it. Now, I've, because I've done so many, it's ingrained in my head, but I do recommend a standard script to follow for you so that you can make sure you get all those points in during those, those sales calls. So next thing, number five, is the onboarding process. So this is when a client says, yes, I wanna work with you. So what does that process look like? Well, usually that includes contracts, um, getting the payment information. Um, you may wanna have like a welcome letter or welcome packet, and those are really important because it helps set the boundaries. So for example, what is your policy for missed calls? What is your policy for late calls? What is your policy if they never schedule a call for you? What is your refund policy? What is your email policy? Have all that in one document that can be sent to your client right away so they know those boundaries because people love boundaries, believe it or not. And that way you'll know, they'll know right from the beginning how they can interact with you. So think about your onboarding process, what you do to bring a client on board, what documents you want to present to them to make that transition very easy. Then you also would like to have a sales follow-up process. So for those folks you did the call with and they're like, mm, I need some more time, I don't have the money, how are you gonna follow up with those people? Um, how are you going to um, keep them on, you know, on your list of follow-ups, you know, to check in with them through email, send a gift, phone calls, whatever, however your sales process looks like. Establish a process. Establish the certain times of the week that you're going to do that. Establish how you're going to reach out to that person. Do all of that. Get that down to a process. It becomes very automated for you and then it becomes easier to stick to. The seventh thing I want to talk to you about is a testimonial process. So you have people on your client list. And what a lot of entrepreneurs do is they wait to the end of the contract to ask for a testimonial. And I wanna encourage you not to do that. The time to get a testimonial from your client is when they're in the midst of working with you. If especially they had a big win or some type of um, thing that really went well for them as a result of your coaching, that's the time to go in and ask for a testimonial. So make sure when you ask for testimonials that you really get a before and after scenario from your client. Before I worked with Jill, my marketing was a disorganized mess. Now, as a result of working with Jill, I have a marketing plan and I know exactly how I can market my business. Those are good types of testimonials. So what I do, again, I use a survey feature. I ask four or five questions through that same survey. I email it out to my clients. I ask them very nicely if they would do it for me, most because they're happy with my service and we're still working together, are happy to oblige. So consider some type of testimonial process that doesn't occur at the end of the contract because that's when you're gonna get the best testimonials. And speaking of the end of the contract, the last step, number eight, is what is your offboarding process? Because some folks may not need to work with you after that time. So what do you do to kind of easily transition them away from your coaching? You know, maybe share notes that you've captured during your coaching calls, a thank you gift, um, setting them up as an affiliate, you know, whatever that looks like for you. It determine what your offboarding process will be before your clients reach that point because then you'll have that leverage there to really maybe get them to sign on with a maintenance package or maybe sign into some other type of program you have or just wish them well and have them be a great referral source for you. So I know there was a lot of information in this video. All eight steps are uh, in the transcript and I hope that helps you think about what you need for your coaching practice to be success, especially as it relates to client relations, sales, follow-ups, and testimonials. And if you need any additional marketing help, come on over to my website at jillcelest.com. And until next time, here's to your marketing success and have a great day.